Who are you? I'm Dr. Bob Hieronymus, a lowly PhD hanging out in Owings Mills in our home here of 20 years. Right, now give me another one. I'm Dr. Bob Hieronymus. I'm an artist. I've done a series of murals. And... I take that one more time. Right, Dr. Bob Hieronymus and I have been artists. Uh... Let me put it this way. I'm Bob Hieronymus. Historically, artists are paid very little, especially when they begin their work and trying to make a name for themselves. So I always thought that if I had to hire artists, I would pay them as much as I possibly could. We raised the kind of money, the kind of money we needed so that no one worked on this mural that was paid less than $20 an hour. When you talk to any of the artists, you'll find out that's as much as they've ever been paid, period, in their entire life for anything. The very beginning of the apocalypse mural was obviously, this was the hardest of all, which was getting all of those ideas fitted into an entire room and a half. After that was then figuring out how to relate the story so that the story tells something that you really want to emphasize. The eagle was the emphasis of this entire mural. That's the story, the dying of the eagle and its rebirth. That is, what killed America? What has brought America down? I learned that there was a great deal of corruption within this country through corporate powers. And I decided I had to say something about it, but I did not know what, where to, how to write it, but I could paint it. So I decided I would use my car as a billboard. After they got on several covers of different magazines, I decided then I could then move that into buses, the Volkswagen buses. And a friend of mine, he asked me to paint his car. It was photographed by the Associated Press and Life Magazine and UPI. I had no idea it was becoming famous and they didn't know who did it. When I did a radio show, they started to recognize I was the same son of a bitch that did that bus. After spending time with rock and rollers up in New York, I realized I had to return to my art life. I wanted to do murals again. I returned to Baltimore talked to Dr. Chester Wickwire, who's allowed me to show my artworks in there in 1966 and 67, and then I accepted the contract to paint the mural called The Apocalypse. This was a great balanced team, hardworking, and we did finish it exactly on time. It was a real rush to the end, 
meaning that they had to put in overtime, which they weren't paid for. They had to work on Saturdays and Sundays. That was the only way we could finish this piece. You know, we're doing basics. This is not great painting. This is all very simple. I have no interest whatsoever in reproducing what I'm looking on in the outside world. But I got philosophical problems with that because that's not the real world. It's the internal world that is real to me. I'm not interested in trying to make a house look like a house or a person look like a person. And I never even want to look at things as I'm drawing. I want it all come, to come from here. And that's why symbols are very important. When you look at the art style, it's very simple art. It's very direct, the colors are dramatic. It's basically relatively simple. It's the meaning behind it that's so fantastic. That's what you have to wake up the following day and find out what did he really do here. The important thing about being at Hopkins is you have so many scholars and so many visitors that would come up and see the mural. Word was getting around that I was using Hebrew, Egyptian hieroglyphs, Sanskrit and everything. And so some of the professors who took a look at some of my work thought, hey, what does this guy know about these hieroglyphs? What is he saying with them? Was he just making us all up? Fortunately, everything that's up there is accurate in its interpretation. And that was a really good, warm feeling to realize that other scholars looked at it and said, hey, I don't understand your painting here, but what you're saying here is accurate. What I do before I start a piece of work is that I collect as much information about the subject, be it the apocalypse or the Lord's Prayer, and then I put all of this information together and I eventually write a book. I'm in the process now of writing four different books so-called raw data. Okay. This is how I do my work. Everything is in these large journals. Right. And this is what the day-to-day -day of my life is. It's, it's pretty crowded, to see. This one fellow came up. Lee was a fundamentalist. And he came in and he knew the term apocalypse. And of course, he related it to the book of Revelations. And he came in here and he saw this wall with the eagle on it, and he knew what it meant. He said, you're not supposed to tell people this, Bob. This is going to happen, but they're not ready. You can't tell people this. And that's why, you know, I, when I walked up, he was taking these jars and hand grenading each wall, throwing them up against the wall. Fortunately, I, I jumped them, and I was holding them down, and the police finally came up. And, of course, they arrested him, and they asked him why. And, of course, he said the truth. He said, look, the apocalypse is all about the end of this earth. And if you tell people that, they will have nothing to live for. Yes, it's going to happen, but don't tell them that. So he was opposed not to the ideas, but the fact that it was exposed. This is um, the beginning of our paint container collection, so we're saving all of the paint containers and signed all of them, so we can give them as little trophies. This was a really fun summer. Mimics the caduceus. When I was a kid. I always thought like it was cool like how like in Egyptians like they'd paint all that stuff and then we come later like oh my god what does it mean <laughs> you know and I was like I want to do that that looks awesome because I was like obsessed with like history stuff like that as a kid and then while painting here I was like oh it's kind of like that it's like kind of the closest I can get to that in like modern day in a sense. The best crew of artists I've ever worked with. took that last ladder out of that whole stairwell field. Okay, let's do it. This is it. Now we're... 
This is the stairwell, the very oldest part of the history of this mural, the apocalypse. It takes us all the way back to a lost continent called Lemuria. There was a continent on which these beings had direct contact with their soul. And because they had direct contact with their soul, they knew who they were, why they were here, and what they were going to do. This panel is the, the temple of Atlantis and it is suffering the same problem that Lemuria did which was there are these periodic sinkings of all lands because when they become polluted they are put under salt, salt water after thousands of years and then they rise again and then they can be re reused now this tells the story here in this Atlantean temple of its sinking which we are looking at now, at this time period, the sinking of all different lands along all coasts because of, well, you may call it global warming, but it's global changes. And that's going to change literally every continent in the world. Now we have just left Lemuria, Atlantis. We come to this ark, which is kind of like Noah's ark, and we land in Egypt. So this tree is the goodbye literally to the end of Atlantis and its civilization moving then into ancient Egypt. And what you also have is a serpent biting its tail. It is one of those symbols of forever, foreverness. You see three little UFOs coming out of a mothership. You'll see that repetition of the mothership many times in this mural. 666, isn't that the mark of the beast? Every time you got a series of numbers, you add them. 666 comes out to 18, you add one and eight and get nine. Nine is the sacred number. That's the reason why you would see it above Christos's head. Nine is the key to initiation. Even though we may think we're doing all this ourselves, the truth is there are other beings that we're working with we can't even see or know about. And most people don't believe in them anyway but you do after you develop higher awareness and consciousness. And that has to do with Scorpio, which is what this being here is here. Scorpio is called the symbol of death in the Zodiac. What is the symbol of death? Death has a lot to do with your physical body dying, but you continue on in spirit. Seven-pointed stars, you don't normally see seven-pointed stars, but a seven-pointed star is a symbol for initiation and higher consciousness. This Novus Order Seclorum is the new order of the ages, and the new order of the ages is a republic. This is not understanding. This is almost like, here's the stuff, believe it or not. You don't bump into people by accident. We've all known each other somehow, before at other times. There's no final story. The final story is the highly development of a, a spiritual being. That is the end of the story in a certain way, but then you move on to another universe. We're all gonna have to face this together.